Welcome back ladies and gents. In today's episode, we're gonna be working on this 2018 340 M Performance with the B58 engine. Now this one here doesn't have a whole heck of a lot. As you can see, it has the BMS intake, filter, the silicone inlet, otherwise it is stock. It does have a downpipe, but that's it. I guess I should say it does have a few more things. It does have the, I believe it's the Dorch stage two or the fuel at stage two high pressure pump, the uh, Ross Racing PCV system and an MHD tune with the XHP. Otherwise, it is relatively stock. The plan for today is we're gonna install a DAW 2.5 plus uh, Flomax Turbo, I believe it is, with a few other goodies. Since he has the stock charge pipe, we're gonna install the upgraded charge pipe, the upgraded turbo inlet, and the turbo. So we're gonna get at it and show you what we're gonna be installing today. The turbo we've got here is a DAW 2.5 plus Flomax with what I understand is the race cartridge. So this is a little bit of a weird turbo. Normally you would end up having a big inlet on the front where you would use a coupler, but this one actually utilizes the OEM style connection. So if we take the tape off here, you'll see right in the front, you've got that big billet wheel. And for power capabilities, this thing should be pretty capable of doing 650, maybe a little bit more on uh, an ethanol blend, and that's to the wheels. So it's gonna end up putting down a fair bit of power and more than enough to stress the factory 8 HP transmission. I have not yet installed a B58 turbo, but I'm told that it's gonna be much easier than an N54 or a 55, so we're gonna see. It is a used unit, it's a little bit of a prototype, so with the, uh, the compressor cover and whatnot, but install knock on wood should be relatively straightforward. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the battery because I don't need the fuel pump priming and because it's a good thing to do whenever you're doing a major install like this. And I'll show you where we're gonna start with. Back with us is Ben from Australia slash Grease Garage. Hello. He's, for whatever reason, wanting to watch me torture myself with this. What's that thing called? Stockholm Syndrome. You start to love your capture? Yeah. Captor? I think that's with BMWs for both you and Oh me. my God. <laughs> the whole cap is loose. See it? Yep. Every, every single thing I touch is loose. Like these are all loose. These are loose. These are loose. This is loose. I'm sure it's loose. I bet you if I turn it, it's going to come. Yeah, look, it's loose. Is the back one loose? Nope. Oh, he tightened. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it's loose. Yeah, it's loose. They're all loose. Kids need to tighten their <laughs> Like, drink a little bit more milk or pay attention. <laughs> Less, I don't know, Call of Duty and rap. I don't know. Whatever. What's he lifting in the gym? Oh, apparently nothing. <laughs> He's into a seat. Before we can get to the turbo, we need to move this Ross Racing PCB setup, which comes apart pretty easily since homie over here decided he wanted to leave everything extremely loose. But you know, it helps us because now we can rotate it to get it the hell out of the way. What's going on here? Why is this stuck in randomly? That's supposed to be press in, but it's like it's... Excuse the f out of me, but what's going on here? This here is your factory PCV system that goes into the inlet. I would have at least put a zip tie or something on it, but that's kind of a getaway to delete it. We're gonna look to see if we can delete it right on the, the inlet itself, put a cap on and maybe a hose clamp. Mm. Otherwise, we're gonna continue by removing all this. I think we can pull it out in one piece. I just need to get an eight mil and a ratchet. But do you? You might be able to just pull it out. No, nope, because okay. I, I was the one that last touched that. Oh. <laughs> because we're getting rid of the factory inlet and turbo, I'm not gonna plug anything. Of course, don't have something like a socket accidentally drop in there and make your day a worse day. Getting the air box out should be as much as pulling up for as 
loose as all these bolts are tied, I bet you he wasn't able to actually take that out. I mean, you could do yourself a favor and blow all the dirt out, but that's basically the turbo, and that's what we're going to be removing here. That's actually not bad at all. And it will bolt up to the dump pipe and everything. Like same. What? The dump pipe. It's all going to bolt the it up. Down pipe? Down pipe, dump pipe. It's dumping. No. <laughs> it's dumping where? Out the back. Yeah, that's not a dump. That's scavenge. <laughs> It's an exhaust. Yeah, it's evacuating mm. the exhaust, right? Here, you want a little heat shield? I'm gonna make a nice little bracelet for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I wouldn't have touched that. No! Thanks, that's fiberglass. Ah, it's fine. Everything's fine, this is fine. When you go to remove the front inlet, a couple of things to make note of is that the clip, it ends up connecting on three different sides. So what you're gonna have to do is get your 90 degree pick tool. And of course, if you don't have one, you're gonna be fighting way worse and way longer at this. You're gonna need to pick off both ends, the left side and the right side. Make sure they're up and over the plastic so they don't snap backwards and lock it back onto the front snout of the turbo. And after you have both released, the one right in the middle is going to be the one you need to pick up and out. Once that's done, you shouldn't have any issues after a little bit of wiggling and then the front inlet should come out with no more, uh, no more fights. After you get the front inlet off, you're going to move on to the charge pipe. This piece has the same style clip except this one has a plastic retainer. Don't bother trying to save it or take it off nicely, just grab a flathead, break it off and throw it in the garbage. As I fight with this, Ben's going to start by taking the three bolts out where the charge pipe bolts to the front of the throttle body. While the charge pipe is loose, there's going to be the two clips you're going to need to fight with up top. They can be a pain, again they have that stupid locking tab, so make sure you don't end up breaking them. But I guess really if you break it, it's not the end of the world. Again, a right angle pick tool makes pretty quick work of this. So if you don't have one by now, make sure you get one. And if you don't get one, sell your BMW. Anytime you take a pipe off or a coupler off or whatever off, make sure you end up plugging the hole with a blue shop rag. Now make sure that you do not forget the rag like some people have in the past. In this case, we've plugged it with a blue shop rag and then we've moved to taking the two O2 sensor connectors off. These are gonna break, so I'm not gonna bore you with uh, how to do them nicely. Afterwards, we move on to the heat shield. This is just a few or handful of 13 mil nuts. I mean, 13 mil bolts, yeah, they're bolts. The only thing that's left to take the turbo out now is the oil feed, oil drain, and the coolant lines. Now, I don't see where they are, so the one pipe is here, it bolts somewhere, this one goes somewhere, I'm gonna have to figure it out. It's a good thing we have the turbo with all the lines here. You can see here, this is the oil drain. That'll go somewhere either just into the oil pan or just above on the block itself. We're gonna make sure we change all these O-rings, of course, you don't wanna leak. This looks like the oil feed. So this one here, again, looks like it's gonna be on the front portion of the block just underneath where the outlet is. The coolant one over here, you can see it wraps around the front inlet. This is gonna be on the upper coolant jacket or up on the cylinder head. And the rear one here looks like it's going to a soft line. So for this one, there's gonna be a bracket because this is rigid, and then the soft line, which is likely hose clamp. And that's pretty much it. So we're gonna get started. We're gonna look for those, remove it, and see how long it takes to pull the turbo. Here's the one right here. That looks like it's gonna be either the coolant feed or the coolant drain. So we're gonna reach in there, but this hose here is a vacuum hose that is easily, easily broken. So we need to be extremely careful not to catch it because just inside here, it always ends up breaking off and the last thing I need to do is break that. So what I might try is to loosen it and pull it out. That's just a evap or a block, block vent. So let's see. The majority of the bolts are gonna be these T30 head bolts. So just make sure that uh, you don't drop them into the engine bay and put them in the safest spot for you to lose later. Now, hoping this one slides out because 
for it being plastic, the last thing I need is for it to break. Okay, so it came out. Now when that comes out, I can tuck it away underneath here and I don't have to worry about it breaking. After fighting with the plastic line, we're going to start by removing the oil feed and the coolant feed lines. This and both of these are held in with a T30 bolt. Once you get those out, make sure you end up getting your flavor of oil drain pan. Kick it under the car, make sure it wedges real nice against the skid plate. And for good measure, we ended up throwing a towel just inside to catch whatever oil would drip. After loosening the two lines near the front, we're going to move towards the middle of the turbo and go towards the oil drain. This one's a bit of a pain. What you're going to have to do, and you're going to have to do it relatively blind, with a T30, you're going to have to reach under the turbo to feel around for the oil drain, and right to the corner of it, you'll feel the T30. Once it's loosened, it popped out of the pan pretty easy, and uh, afterwards, we'll move further back to loosen the 12 mil nut off of the V-band for the downpipe, and then the two that are holding it to the bell housing of the transmission just further behind. The rear coolant pipe, which is either a feed or a drain, I'm not sure at this point, is a little bit tricky because it has a factory heat shield on it. So what we're going to attempt to do is in behind the wastegate here without damaging the wastegate is to pull off the coolant pipe from here and hopefully that'll allow us to poke it out pull the turbo off it looks like the coolant line ends up having a bit of a band clamp on it and those ones you can't get out easily so if we're able to remove it from here this might be our best case scenario Fortunately, all the bolts are coming out relatively nice, but this uh, this one here is definitely going to start pouring coolant as soon as I pop it out. For the coolant line here, it's again going to be another T30. Once you end up removing the bolt, try and twist it back and forth to break corrosion. These are going to be heat baked after many cycles and many kilometers regardless. Go in with a flathead, poke it a little bit, and eventually it'll come free. Now, because this one's going to be spilling coolant, just make sure that you open the coolant reservoir cap, because if you do not, and I have had it in the past, it'll siphon the cooling system. Unlike other BMW turbos, this one has a bracket that's going to support it when it's bolted to the block. Here I'm just looking to see exactly where the bolt heads are so that I can remove them. And of course, this thing has to come out before we can actually pull out the turbo. So it's going to end up being a T45. I'm going to confirm, but I'm also using these swivels that keep the orientation. So let's see if this will help a little bit. There's going to be three bolts that hold the support bracket to the engine itself. It's going to be a little bit of an awkward fight to get it out. You're going to have to kind of spin it, rotate it, pull it up and towards the front of the vehicle. Just make sure that the airbox is out and the little post that the airbox mounts to and eventually you'll be good to go. We've been victorious with getting those hidden bolts out. Now what we're going to fight with are the 10 mils that are holding the flanges. So the turbo flange, turbo essentially, to the cylinder head. You can see here there's this one big flange just underneath that holds the top of the turbo and then this bottom one holds the bottom of the turbo. So we need to loosen all of these 10 mils and then we should be in a better state to get this turbo out. Can't get to that one because the coolant pipe's in the way. Turns out we didn't need to take those lower bolts out to begin with. We just needed to use a 10 mil and take the upper bolts out now be sure that you do not lose these because they have an integrated washer and a locking nut integrated into them. We're gonna be reusing them. Some people do change them, but we're not going to. After you take the bolts out, you're gonna see this little plate that slips over the exhaust studs that holds the manifold and the turbo to the cylinder head. At this point, we were ready to pull the turbo. I really didn't know what to expect, so when it came out without much of a fight, it was actually a bit of a surprise. Just remember that when you go to pull this turbo out, you're gonna to have to flip it and tip it in some different ways so that it clears everything without scratching the front frame rail. And here it is, the stock turbo right next to the big boy DAW. 
From the outside, it looks the same, but from internals, it's a massive difference. Since this is a hybrid turbo, changing over the wastegate actuator was easy. You didn't need to adjust it, and in turn, you didn't need to recalibrate it once it's back into the vehicle. The C-clip itself, if you end up losing this or breaking it, good luck, you're not gonna be finding another one. So take care and make sure you don't snap this little thing. Same thing here, because the turbo is gonna have open ports and we don't want anything to go inside or through the wheels or chip you know, one of the turbine blades off, we're gonna cover it all with green painter's tape. And like all turbo installs, I get a little bit of oil and spin the cartridge just to feel that the friction ends up subsiding and you know that you're not gonna have a dry start. Cleanliness is key. We just blow all the dust and whatever might have been inside of the runners for the turbo manifold and we end up cleaning the cylinder head where we're going to be mating the new gasket with the turbo. We're getting ready to throw the new turbo in. The plan of attack is we put the O-ring on for the drain because that's gonna be a pain afterwards. All the other ones are done, ready to go. These two are more likely to get snagged up on something. So these ones we're gonna leave until after. You can access them from the front. The coolant one here, this one should be okay. We're going to have to reach and maybe push the soft line over it blind but we did put a hose clamp already on the soft line we're gonna throw it in the car and um i guess see how much of a fight it's gonna give us this view gives you a little bit of a better idea as to where the bolts are that are holding the stiffening bracket or the support bracket for the turbo we installed it before we ended up putting the turbo in. You could have done with or without, but it was easier since we had the space here. When we go to put the turbo back in, you just need to be a little bit cautious not to bump anything on the chassis. And surprisingly enough, it actually was relatively easy to uh, get back into place. When you rock the turbo forward, you can put the metal plate back onto the exhaust studs. And when you do so, you can alternate the bolts to snug it down against the cylinder head to crush the new exhaust gasket that you had installed. Putting the turbo in, like the drain is a soft line, so you could usually kind of poke it in after, but it feels like it just, it just right in. So I don't believe it, but Ben's gonna look. It's looking very in. So the BBC is in the hole? Oh, the BBC is in the hole. Okay. It's not a first, but uh, once it's in, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna leave. Red, red Loctite. Red Loctite. What was it, 20 minutes just to get it off? <laughs> 20 seconds to put it back in. I don't wanna talk about it. <laughs> well, I'm on a roll with all the bolts fitting in exactly as I would have really liked them to. We're going to snug up all the lines, put all the bolts in, torque it all up, and I'll give you all the torque specs somewhere. <laughs> what? what was that, Ben? Plus 10. That plus one. 10 what? HP. HP? HP. Or, or Newton meters. What's wrong with Newton meters? Nothing. Right. Newton meters is better than plus 10. Sure. All right. As you can see, the engine is complete. We've installed the DAW 2.5 special and magic whizzy hair blow dryer way down in there. Put the air box back in. The BMS inlet here, not sure of the exact naming or wording of it, we have the BMS charge pipe here in its nice gloss. If you touch it, it's going to scratch black. The BMS silicone upper intake portion, BMS filter adapter, and the BMS filter. Along with that, because Idris, the owner of the vehicle, goes to the gym just to be weaker, I have these all tightened, so these are not going to come off by hand. 
and he's not gonna have PCV problems. This is all nice and solid. His strut isn't gonna blow through the top because it's loose and he likes it that way, I guess, but that's okay, I'm not gonna judge. Otherwise, DS2 pump with the modified hard line that we did before and it's ready for a test drive. So the war wounded skeletal child that's hiding behind the wall is uh, coming with us for the maiden voyage of this automobile if it starts without issue. We should probably cut to that or figure that out at some point. And then Mr. Vicarage here from Vicarage Customs slash Grease Garage is gonna come with us. So he's gonna play Ballast Boy. We're gonna go for a test drive and see what kind of power it makes. Starts up all right, which I would expect. Okay. okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> it makes the right noises. 20 pounds of wheels. 20 pounds. At what? 3,000, I think? 3,000. Holy f Okay, feels quick. Uh, how's it looking, Taylor? Looks okay. All right, ready? Got some torque. Yeah, that was actually pretty good. How did it look on the lock? 20 pounds, nothing. They both stayed at zero. AFRs went to 10 8 though. Yeah, that's a little rich. It's like safe tune. Yeah, it makes absolutely sense. Yeah, he just wants to dial it in. He's probably wanting to be a little bit on the safe rich side because of our uh, gas we up here. We have up here in uh, that thousand meter Mexican elevation Canada. life. Thousand meter, something like that. Yeah. I don't know. happens when it's uh, at a low RPM and you roll into it. Okay, here we'll do one more and I'll just slowly roll in. Ready? Yep. Okay, that's fine. We got the lugs we needed. Well, there you have it, ladies and gents. Another uh, turbo upgrade successfully completed. We're gonna reach out to my buddy to come pick it up and see what he thinks. It's actually pretty good. This is the original turbo that I had bought for my 540 that I had sold him, thinking I didn't need that much of an upgrade, but now I think I wanna buy another one. So we'll see how that goes. Anyways, that's all for today. Feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. What? Smells like forest lawn, I bet you what. Look at this. I literally said, I bet you it's gonna be fing loose because you touched it. And it's fing finger tight. Idris, like, for somebody that goes to the gym, you're the weakest fing I've known. <laughs> Put your purse down. Welcome to Canada. We call this a pen light because it looks like a pen and it shines like a light. What do you call it? Pencil torch. It's a torch and it's a shape like a pen because you can put it in your pocket. That's not a torch, it emits light. Yeah. A torch is fire. Torch this thing in a minute. Yeah, I'm thinking about the same thing, don't worry. It's fine. It's fine, Everything is, everything is fine. What we are doing is alternating that one from German to French <laughs> Bagel. Yeah. I woke up today and I really wanted to eat a croissant. Croissant. Croissant.